Steph, um, down here. Uh, just I want to get your reaction just first of all to the, to the league not downgrading Draymond's flagrant from a two to a one. Um, just does that surprise you? Just your thoughts on that? It's shocking. Um, I don't know what the explanation was. I really doesn't really matter in terms of how we feel about it, but. Um, good thing about what we do and hopefully what Draymond can do is just put it behind him, continue to be himself, play his game, impact the game like he knows how to do. Uh, but it's obviously not shocking. Along those lines, just do you feel he has to be more careful now with the two points, the, the limits for for a suspension, and just, just how that may impact things moving forward? Two Unfortunately, yeah, he's got to be mindful of that because he's in that situation. Um, only he can kind of tell you what that means for him and the way he approaches the game. But like I said, I just want him to be himself and uh, make the plays he knows he's capable of making, impact the game, be physical, be demonstrative, be Draymond that we expect. But um, hopefully not get in a situation where interpretation of rules or the way somebody might see it can go against him. I'm sure Draymond will speak to this later, but on his podcast, he said he's pretty sure his reputation is what is leading this. Other players have chimed in. That's his reputation getting these things. Do you think that's what it is? So that's just they're reading into other things he's done in the past or has thought that he did, did in the past? I think uh, it's where human nature comes in, where obviously if you've watched him play, you know how demonstrative he is, he is situations that he's found himself in in the past. Like, There's no way you can't clear that out of your mind, right or wrong. I think it's wrong in terms of like that, you know, situation yesterday where we'll never know. But if somebody else does that exact same foul, is it a one, is it a two, whatever it is. So that's the mind games. You can kind of just play with yourself and definitely is a, to us and to me a situation where it's because it's him, because of just the way that he plays the game can influence the way you read a call. Um, that's the unfortunate part, but what you gonna do about it? Uh, Steph, right here. All right. So how do you guys deal with it when, you know, you don't want to let that to be the focus of, you know, the way things go or to affect your play, but how, how do you guys deal with it when you say, oh, here goes Draymond again, or, or it's just, well, all right, let's just take that and go on. Even that question is kind of crazy, like it's, we're just playing basketball, and he's just playing basketball. And like we have to deal with what happens in the game, and that's what we did last night. We responded, and you can see that that was why there's a lot of emotion because of how the game went and that you know particular call. But we don't have to deal with anything. We just play basketball, and we do it together. And everybody brings something different, including Draymond, that helps us win games. So we don't want anybody to have to change their approach, um, you know, based on anything. So. That'll be the test for, for him individually moving forward and for us as a team. Uh, Steph, uh, Clay called out, um, shouted out Jacob Rubin yesterday for calling out that inbounds play uh, that the Grizzlies are running late. Um, how big has Jacob been? It's just kind of a behind the scenes guy for you guys, not just this season, but for a while now. He, he's always been a great uh, you know, character and a value to what we do. Um, from the times in the film room to now, you know, having scouts and being a part of, you know, the, the behind the bench scene and whatnot. Like, he has a care factor that when it comes to working out guys, his consistent approach, he's got a great sense of humor that keep, keeps things light throughout the course of the season. He's competitive as hell in terms of everything that he does. Um, and then when he has an opportunity to influence a timeout conversation or a read and all that type of stuff. You see where he brings his value and we listen. And that's kind of the, it's a shout out. It's a credit to coach in terms of the collaboration and the fact that people can speak up and um, if they do their work and they know what they're talking about, everything is uh, received really well. And, and uh, Jake has benefited from that, but he's also, he's put in the work on that front. Steph, you've seen several uh, 
I guess, threes, end up playing fours with you guys from uh, Harrison Barnes did it, uh, you know. But now it's it's Wiggins and he's become a big rebounder for you. What what does it take from what you've seen your teammates do to battle bigger players and just the mindset it takes to, to drop down a power forward? I mean, part of it is a commitment to what you're being asked to do. I don't know how many times people talk about, or maybe to him is a critique of his game, like what's your rebounding rate or, you know, that even hits home to him before because it's mostly about, you know, his scoring ability and his playmaking ability and, you know, what he's asked to do on that front leading a team. But, you know, with us, it's a different conversation of where do you really add value? Um, where can you really shine in a specific role? And are you going to be committed to doing that? And, you know, it's, it's an unders undersized four, but an athletic, you know, freaking nature on that front. It's just a commitment to being physical, to caring about getting the ball, you know, using your physical abilities to create an advantage. You've seen it in the playoffs this year. He's gotten us um, a couple extra offensive possessions and some big moments that it's just a will, like who's going to go get to the ball first, and he was he was the guy to do it. So um, I think once you point out how important those opportunities are within a basketball game, within a playoff game, and how important those possessions are, you show the film, you talk about it. Wiggs has understood that that really makes a difference, and you can, you know, develop a sense of pride around that, and you get celebrated for it. It's not just putting the ball in the basket; it's everything else. Yeah, is um, is there a difference when you guys allow Jaw to just like walk in, nobody around, and shoot a three, or when there's at least kind of a half contest, or you know, what's what's kind of the strategy? figure out how to answer that question. There's no real strategy other than just make things difficult for him on the things that he likes to do really well. Um, you want to put pressure on him. Anybody in this league can make threes. Like, you know, especially if you're, they're uncontested and they're, and they're in rhythm. When, and like you said, I guess the, the type of, of shots he's going to get and the type of shots we want him to take or what we're going to give up. Um, you gotta, gotta be able to switch that up from time to time. Not give everybody a steady diet of any of any read, but it's difficult because he's such a great player. He's such an athletic player. He puts so much pressure on the rim. He puts pressure as a playmaker. He can finish all different type of ways. So it's a challenge, um, and it requires everything. Even with the best strategy, he still had 30 last night. So you got to figure out how to continue to give him different looks and try to slow him down. Also, Jackson hit set, uh, six threes. Just, I don't know if you rewatched the film on it, but what was it breakdowns at all, or is it just he got hot? It's both. I mean, he hit some tough shots, but we gave him, um, I think we gave him maybe one or two too many comfortable looks that, again, a guy who's capable, if you get confidence and in a rhythm, then the tough ones become a little easier. Um, especially when he got one on the offense. He shot one, his offense rebound came back to him. He had no hesitation at all, pulled up again. That kind of surprised us in terms of the shot he took and he made it. So you got to expect him to, to keep playing that way, play, keep playing aggressive, hunting those threes down, especially if we're going small for you know parts of the game. Um, and he has different people on him. So try to make him uncomfortable as much as possible, understand he's going to make some just because he's capable. Steph, how how um how much a point of emphasis has rebounding been? It's one of their strengths, and at times it looked like they hurt you guys on the board yesterday. And then you you look up at the end of the game, and you guys actually had more rebounds. How important is that to the success of this series? And within that, Looney, even though he hadn't started the last two games, when Draymond goes out, he steps in the second half and seemed like had a big big hand in that rebounding battle. It's all about the possession game. It's rebounding. It's turnovers. And um, for us, with certain lineups we're going to throw out there, I mean, you explain it really well. That's that is the game. Um, seems like sometimes for them, with, you know, with um, Jackson Jr., with uh, Brandon Clark, 
Tillman, you know, even Ja at times, like the game almost starts when the shot goes up because they are so athletic, physical. Um, they commit a lot of bodies to the offensive glass. So for us, you got to, like, you know, to Marcus's question earlier, you got to have a commitment to doing whatever you can to keep them off the glass, limit them to one shot, um, and uh, and win the possession game. Because we feel like if we can do that, we can create enough good offense that can help us, uh, you know, create separation. What are some things you felt like you guys did well in game one, and what kind of counters kind of are you expecting from the Grizzlies in game two to those things that y'all did well? It's kind of hard to say just because there's – I think we, um, for the most part, I think I talked about before the series, we eliminated the bad turnovers that lead to easy transition buckets for them. I think we maybe had two or three live ball turnovers where they – Capitalize on the other side um, to you know continue to take those away and then keep doing what we did well even better like rebound better um, contain the three point line a little bit better with with with, with Jaron um, and then be able to be ready for whatever combination the guys are going to be out there because uh, as you see in game one things can change really quickly. Steve was talking about kind of how homegrown the Grizzlies are. What's that added layer of pride for someone like you, Clay, Draymond, and even Kavon, Jordan, to build something and have it sustainable? I mean, there are a lot of different ways to put together a good team, but the fact that you can have a lot of different type of guys, um, come together and build synergy and chemistry for us to be doing it as long as we have. And now with, you know, with Loon taking a, a more prominent role, JP coming into his own, you know, we got Mood Wise and, uh, and JK who are chomping at the bit to get more time. Like it's, it's our way of having, you know, built success and like you said, sustaining it. And there's a pride of, our culture and DNA kind of taking over and continue to prove that we can win at the highest level. So that's what we want to control as long as we can, because you know, in the, in the league, it's kind of uh, those examples are hard to hard to find. Um, just with Gary Payton, second, what have you thought about his growth throughout this season, and how key is he? He had that huge dunk like in the first quarter, some point, I think it was first quarter. Um, just how key is he going to be to like the success of this series? He's been a key to our whole success all year. Um, and his ability to, you know, disrupt the ball, become an offensive threat, and, you know, knocking down big shots, putting pressure on the rim, Finding cutting in lanes and all those type of things. He's just, you know building his IQ on that and how we how he can uh, be a threat out there on the offensive end. This has added another value to what he brings. Um, and he makes his presence felt when he's out there. Um, he's been doing that all season. It's it's nice to see it translates to you know playoff impact and the ability to <clears throat> you know have a series like Denver where. He had, you know, a bright moment in game three. It's kind of, you know, hit or miss the rest of the series. He comes in game one, he's ready to play. It's how we, it's how we operate because we have a lot of different weapons. Steph, when you were uh, 19, you think you could have stepped into the Western Conference semifinals and, and been as productive as Jonathan Kaminga? No, I lost my, like, little uh, cat card we had at Davidson College, like the little thing that was my – ticket to get anywhere cafeteria to the gym I lose that like every other week so answer is absolutely not <laughs> I was just trying to keep my head on straight and remember where my dorm was <laughs> what what is it I mean obviously he's a, a special athlete but what does it take mentally to be able to step into a game five in the first round and step into that environment last night uh I honestly don't know because uh <laughs> I can't imagine, like even when I was I was 21 as a rookie, like trying to figure out 
would imagine just play meaningless in regular season basketball and, and coming to my own, let alone playing with high stakes, you know, atmosphere. So I don't know how he would explain it. It's just the, the rational confidence maybe that you have in yourself, that like you're ready for anything, even at that age. Um, that's the key to him just getting even at this point. And I hope that never changes because you know he's he's shown that he he can uh, he can come in and provide amazing impact. Still has you know obviously a crazy you know ton of room to grow. So it's pretty pretty impressive.